Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Welcome to Syosset Library's Turn the Page podcast. This is Jessica. I am your host, and I am back with Rachel Harrison, who is one of my favorite horror authors. Every single book that um, she has put out is extremely refreshing. It twists tropes in new ways and uh, makes you think. And I really loved Black Sheep. That is your that is your newest. So. Um, why don't you give us a quick rundown um, about this book and sort of um, how you decided to go to this book from your last few? So Black Sheep is about Vesper. She is a prickly, cynical, 23-year-old. Uh, she works at Shorty's, which is a like cheesy chain restaurant. Um and she's been on her own since she was 18 when she left home her family is extremely religious um and it's the kind of religious where if you don't want to participate if you don't believe you cannot stick around um so she fled that environment has been on her own um telling herself she's doing fine but then surprise she gets an invite to her cousin slash best friend's wedding. Um, Rosie and Vesper grew up together. They were super close. Rosie is the one person from home that Vesper really misses. Um, only Rosie is marrying Brody, who is Vesper's ex-boyfriend and kind of the her first and only love. So on one level, it's spite. <laughs> on one level, it's curiosity as to why she's being invited home now after she was told well if you leave you can never come back um so she decides to return home for the wedding and in doing so uh her life unravels in surprising ways um and I decided I wrote this book you're not supposed to like listen to it's better to tune out all outside voices but um after Cackle came out, there was like some debate of whether or not it was horror. To me, it was. Um, there's some, I think, creepy scenes and like there's a double date in there, which to me is the epitome of horror. <laughs> but um, I wanted to, you know, with Cackle and such sharp teeth, they, the horror was more grounded internally into what these, my protagonists were going through and kind of a unique experience um, and more tied into womanhood. And so for this book, I wanted the horror to be more external. So, um, and a little bit more intense. And um, there's still some whimsy in it and it's still a character study, but I wanted to do something a little bit more brutal. So <laughs> um, I wanted to be like, yeah, this is horror. This is horror with a capital H. Um, and so that's what kind of led me to write this book. Yeah, I think that that is interesting because I couldn't, like, there's nothing about your other books that to me aren't horror. And I think like part of that is people expect horror to look like one thing, which actually um, we'll kind of talk about in a few minutes because there's a spoiler. And I, if you have not read this book, I don't want you to miss out on it because um, it was, it definitely took me by surprise, but we'll get to that. We'll give a spoiler warning when we approach it. Um, but, you know, I think like that is kind of one of my least favorite things. Like you want, you know, you think horror and people sometimes think it has to check certain boxes. Um, and, you know, to a degree, sure, but there have to be some horrifying things in it. And I think that you, achieved that with cackle the double date in general is the scene that I always think about with cackle by the way um and it was it was pretty horrifying um but you know such sharp teeth 
had a lot of horror in it as well. Um, but yeah, Black Sheep was really interesting in that it, once again, it took another horror trope and it sort of reframes it a bit. Um, and Vesper was an interesting character. I think you always have really interesting protagonists. No, no two are necessarily the same. Um, and I think that she was really interesting just in sort of how she related to the world, uh, both the world of her family and the external world that she had escaped to. Um, had you spoken to people who grew up in very religious families to kind of get an idea as to uh, what the mindset might be having left? So I did watch a lot of cult documentaries um, and I did have some experience, you know, talking to people who I know who grew up religious and then were no longer um, part of that religion. But because this is, fiction and particularly horror fiction um I didn't do too much like get too caught up in the details of what would it really be like because this is a fictional like religion that she grew up in and you know I I didn't want to root it too much in reality because um it's it's a delicate balance dealing with religion because I'm not a religious person but I have respect for people to make their own choices and have their own beliefs. Um, so I didn't want to like get too into the nitty gritty and be like, this religion is bad. <laughs> and you and somebody who escaped it, you know, I didn't want to um, bog myself down in the reality of it too much, but I did want it to feel authentic. So it was a bit of a balance um, going into it. And then I think mostly what I wanted to explore with, Vesper is to have somebody who was very cynical because I wrote this book kind of coming out of you know the the more intense years of the pandemic um and it was a tough time for everybody and you know I think for everybody the state of the world the past few years has been has been really tough and there's a lot of cynicism out there a lot of people who are just like yeah the world's ending and like everything sucks and everybody sucks and you know me too at times so I kind of wanted to lean into that with her um more than the like you know I I escaped a, a cult or you know I grew up religious um because she's you know six years out from that part of her journey and now she's just existing in the world like the rest of us yeah I think another thing actually that we didn't really talk about um is that her mom was a famous scream queen which was very interesting. Uh, so her mother was the star of many famous horror movies, uh, and she resembles her. And, um, you know, like she has this really surreal situation mm -hmm. where like she could be around on Halloween and people are emulating her mother, which was uh, something that was really sort of surprising, especially when, you know, you first meet Vesper and you see where she's coming out of, um, you know, it's just not what you would expect. And her mother is also a prickly character. Uh, so the story is also about like, her parental relationships and parent-child relationships um, as well. Yeah, so Constance Wright was really fun. Um, it was fun to like make up fictional horror movies um, and to kind of make up a fictional film star. And I did part of the inspiration for this book, which is funny, is have you ever seen those like progressive insurance commercials about becoming your parents <laughs> they're for some reason they like get me every time and I think they're really funny um but I do think at a certain stage of our lives and you know when you're coming out of your 20s I'm in my early 30s and you have certain responsibilities and like <laughs> you're, you kind of are the age your parents were when you were young and your brain was malleable and you kind of like your earliest memories of your parents I think it's interesting to get to this stage of life and see your parents as people and then also pick up on things that you're like oh I'm acting just like my dad right now or 
Like I stand like a flamingo sometimes where I'll rest my um, right foot above my left knee. And I was doing that one time and my aunt was like, do you always stand like that? I'm like, yeah, sometimes. She's like, nanny used to do that all the time. And I don't remember my nanny. She passed away when I was three. And so just like getting to this age where you're wondering like how much of who I am is me and how like the whole nature versus nurture thing, I think becomes a bigger question the older you get and the more perspective you get. Um, So I wanted to explore that. And I think Constance was really fun I wanted to, I knew she was going to be very cold. So it's like, how can I make this character fun and likable while she's like pretty awful? (laughs) Like she's a bad mom. She's not very kind. She's like unpleasant to be around. How can I make, give her something redeeming for the readers? And so anyone who picks up a horror book probably is a horror movie fan. So it's kind of a balance for her of being like, oh my gosh, she's so mean. She's so terrible, but she's also kind of cool. Like she lives in this house full of horror memorabilia and she's like a scream queen. So um, I think that was why I gave her that background as a scream queen. So she was a little bit more (laughs) tolerable for the reader. So this kind of runs into spoiler territory um, and I am going to let everybody kind of know that you should probably click this off now and go read the book um, before listening to any more because this was sort of something that knocked me off of my seat. It wasn't a very early spoiler, but it was early enough that it does it it is really important to the book um so once again spoiler warning if you pass this point and you have not read the book you are spoiling it all right Rachel get into it (laughs) um so the thing that was you know again that made me go huh was yes Vesper is from a very religious family but that religion was not specified and with the way that they talk um, and the way that she recalls her youth and the way that the families regard each other and they talk about like swear jars and things like that, you assume it's some sort of, you know, evangelical, ultra, ultra, ultra right wing Christian sect, but they are Satanists, Yes, (laughs) which was very interesting. And um, I did not see that coming. So, wow, Rachel. So first of all, um, where did that twist come from? So again, I didn't want to offend anybody. <laughs> like, it's hard to talk about. Like, I didn't want to pick a certain religion and be like, this is bad. Like, so Satanism was kind of safe for me. <laughs> um, I, again, like, I respect this is like believe what right. you want to believe I mean, there, worship. You know, there, but the people all, who yeah. are like no one's going to show up at my house I don't think or like find <laughs> where I live and be like how dare you about <laughs> uh right. painting satan if it's not in the greatest light it's happened before it'll happen again <laughs> um so that was part of it but also I think um it's a horror novel so it's fun and um I think it is just it was just an interesting and fun space to play in because then you can you know have Baphomet and you can have pentagrams <laughs> and um all these things that I think you know radical beliefs you know no matter what they are can have a similar effect on you and the people around you and um so I was still exploring the same topic I would have explored if it was evangelical like I don't think it would have changed the book too much um but it was just a more fun and for me a a safer space to play in as an author I mean I think like the point really is is you know again without giving any more spoilers away though is just that extremism is a problem you know yeah I mean 
you know, you can be an extremist of anything and the extremism is really where the issue comes in. I mean, there are, you know, moderate Satanists. <laughs> there yeah. are, you know, uh, very liberal Satanists. Um, and, uh, you know, this was a, this again is a fictional book and it's a cult. Um, and there was other things going on in this, uh, for sure. So, you know, I thought that that was just a really uh, clever twist um because you are expecting one specific thing and you know like considering just sort of how uh their town uh, the town of Virgil is kind of set up um you know you kind of realize that whatever expectations there would be of Vesper would be very different in this particular environment um and it also sort of you know like it was very interesting to kind of wonder how Constance would be this really religious woman, but like be in all of these horror movies, you know, like there's hypocrisy pretty much in every religion. Um, but that just seemed kind of like a weird quirk. And it was an interesting um, road to follow uh, when we got there. Yeah, I remember explaining the book to my mom because she hasn't read it yet. And she was like, wait but she's like about con the constant care she's like wait but she's religious she's in horror movies I was like well you you'll just have to read the book like it'll explain <laughs> it, it was a little bit like well I hope people buy this like bef like buy into Constance before they read it and then once they get to the twist it'll make a little bit of sense because it, it was important for me um to to try and keep any mention I mean there's devil horns on the cover but I think it's easy enough to kind of not read into it until you've read the book um but trying to keep all of the Satan talk off the jacket copy and off you know I'm hoping people will be surprised because I think um it is it is a fun dark twist to get to um and I'm sure some people will guess it and I'm sure some people will will see stuff online, but I hope uh even if it if the the Satan even if the Satanism is spoiled, there are some more twists down the line. So um hopefully there's there's still a surprising, enjoyable reading experience for everybody. <laughs> I think there will be. I think people are really going to like this one. Um, so, I mean, my next question, I guess, is are you working on anything else upcoming? Yes. So um, I'm currently working on a vampire book called So Thirsty. And the quick pitch is it's like Thelma and Louise, but with vampires. Um, and I'm I'm thinking that'll be out for next spooky season. I'm trying to we have to chat every year, obviously, Jessica. <laughs> so I'm trying to keep keep a book a year. Um, so I'm working on that now, and it's it's a lot of fun, and uh, it's scary and a little bit sexy. So I'm having a blast. I'm very much excited to read that um, because I love everything that you write, <laughs> and yeah, so uh, I'm excited. Um, Thank you so much for chatting with us about this book. This was great. Uh, read all of Rachel Harrison's books. Um, this one was Black Sheep. And there is The Return, Such Sharp Teeth, Cackle. I recommend every single one of them to people all the time. Thank you. I appreciate it. So once again, this was Jessica with Syosset Library's Turn the Page podcast. Our guest today was... Rachel Harrison. And we are going to close this chapter of Turn the Page. <laughs> It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode.